Welcome back. It's an exciting time for the Onion Lake Cree Nation. They have joined together with three other First Nations to form a new energy alliance to build opportunities through the oil and gas sector. This MOU establishes the basis for future definitive discussions. It's a really uh, very historic, memorable time, a uh, very proud moment in our, our nation, uh, forming an alliance to work together within the oil and gas industry with Treaty 6 representatives and also Treaty 8. It is the one sky. One sky means wake up. It's time for us to move forward and move forward in a positive light in the area of economic growth. And for me personally, it is enough is enough. We, we need to move forward and have an agenda for our communities that is going to create employment, create the capacity to fill the needs of our province and other provinces so that we are part of the workforce. This has been an ongoing project for over two and a half years and to finally come to the table for all four nations to sign and agree on an MOU to me is a celebration of a real partnership. And what benefits do you hope that your people see? Well obviously uh, creating the wealth, working with industry players, developing our re natural resources and reinvesting back into training and employment and business and entrepreneurs uh, as a result of this uh, it just enhances the success that Anya Lake has already has thus far. And have the partnerships been successful so far? Yes, uh, we have. We always take a position in Anya Lake that in order for a partnership to truly work, it must have a win-win situation and result. And we've done that, demonstrated with Black Pearl, Fogo and the other players at our table. Can you talk about how you're going to work with industry partners and government? Well, it's always been, we're no different with Anya Lake Energy as the CNRLs and the Husky Oils of the world, that we go in and we sit with First Nations people and, and develop a joint venture agreement. The only difference is we'd like to come at it from a 50-50 revenue sharing, whereas a uh, standard quo, a status quo with oil and gas is we get the royalties and the oil industry gets 90% a, a of the profit. We want to reverse that. More profit to our community uh, means more business opportunities, more employment opportunities for our young people. And do you think that that's a model that other nations can use as well? Certainly, uh, I really uh, believe that it will open the door to other First Nations entering into agreements. And many have already entered in different agreements in different in parts of the industry. This one's primarily driven to the oil and gas sector. Well, they provide services. They, pr they truck, uh, truck all of our oil, water and sand. Uh, they have a construction company and uh, construct all of our leases, all of our facility and single well batteries. Um, and we're on their land and they're our partners and uh, it's a good working relationship. You have to join and make those partnerships in order for you to not learn from the mistakes and so when you join a partnership like this where there's so much knowledge already in the field of oil and gas, you have to have a win-win situation in my opinion. One of my goals for the nation is to have sustainability and to grow economically so that we do have viable businesses in the community where there's actually a real economic growth, not only for entrepreneurs, but for businesses to be part of our community. Sky's the limit is how I look at it. By creating the employment, the partnership on our territory, it's created a lot of employment in, in Anya Lake Cree Nation. Uh, primarily in the oil and uh, fluid hauling, for example. We've uh, created uh, 30 tankers that we have so far in a ski up boy subsidiary entity. And the profits that we've made through our oil and gas sector have been reinvested in the community. Also, we're looking at diversifying our profits in other sectors other than oil and gas. We need to be mindful of that because it's a non-renewable resource and we need to diversify the investments and create other business opportunities. I'm just happy and an honored to, to be a part of this today. And uh, again, we talk about the advice of the elders, uh, not to think of today, but to think of tomorrow. Think of the future, the future of the children and the children yet unborn. As I mentioned earlier, our ancestors in the treaty 100, over 100 years ago, many of us weren't there, but we're here as a result of that and we want to continue to work towards building a brighter future for our young people. 
Up next, I get to talk with a Holocaust survivor and author, Dr. Eva Olson, who after everything she's been through, still shares a message of love and hope with students across the country. Please stay with us.